Is the worst yet to come, Dr. Fauci? Yes, it is. Bottom line, it's going to get worse. Breaking news as the coronavirus... COVID-19. 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 pandemic spreads. California, New York, Illinois, and Connecticut all ordering non-essential employees to stay home. 75 million people across the United States. It is now officially a pandemic. We had some early warning signs as early as January of 2020 that there could be a problem coming. But obviously, when we got to March, we knew it was going to be a year unlike any other. And a year that leadership was really going to need to stand up and lead. It felt like you were driving into fog. You just didn't know what was gonna be on the other side. So we had to plan for everything. And it was many long nights, many long days of trying to make decisions based on the best information that we had. In 2009, we were lucky enough to serve as the centralized distributor for the H1N1 vaccine. We also are deeply involved in the Vaccines for Children's program and have been for over a decade. So we have a lot of deep experience in dealing with different kinds of vaccine distribution. When things first started to bubble up with the pandemic, there was a scramble for a lot of the core medical supplies that we deal with every day. Things like N95s and isolation gowns, things that most people don't ever really think about were suddenly in high demand. So we've had a long-standing relationship, partnership really, with various agencies within the federal government. Summer of 2020, we're in the middle of the pandemic. The vaccines are under development, but not yet approved. And Operation Warp Speed has just been announced. Those early days were really all about education. Operation Warp Speed was a very collaborative, multi-agency approach to solving the needs of the vaccines, from product development all the way to distribution. How are we going to work with our public officials to think about getting a vaccine distribution infrastructure put into place? And it's a good thing we started that early because it takes a significant amount of time to build a fit-for-purpose custom vaccine distribution program. It's both an honor and a privilege for McKesson to play such an important role. We stand ready to meet this moment right now. We're the largest distributor of vaccines in the U.S. So this is really in our DNA. We are distribution experts. We were building plans for unknown vaccines manufactured by unknown manufacturers in unknown quantities, approved to be administered in unknown patient populations. I think at one time we had 39 or 49 scenarios going for the way we would build out our facilities. Given all of the uncertainties, given the supply chain constraints, given the lockdowns, it was beyond anything that had previously been contemplated. So we felt that a centralized model would allow the greatest level of control, oversight, reporting, and flexibility that the government really needed to have for a program like this. It typically takes us between 12 and sometimes upwards of 18 months to build and operationalize a distribution center we had to bring eight distribution centers online in three months. Once we found the buildings, then we actually had to put all the equipment inside of the buildings. So build out freezers, build out refrigerators, erect rack to store all of the kits. We added over 3.3 million square feet of capacity for the vaccine distribution and storage of the related ancillary supply kits. It was an undertaking like none other in my career. We had to do all of this at this pace, this scale, this speed. This was all being done with hundreds of people in a facility while the pandemic was raging. Our teams sprung into action, which really isn't a fair statement. Our teams had been in action, been in intensive planning for many, many months. That's where communication really comes in place, and a strong commitment across the public entities, the private entities, to really just do whatever needed to be done to optimize this. It was all about getting the right answer for the citizens of this country. We are not making any allocation decisions. That is all done by the CDC, Operation Warp Speed, and the states and their plans. The centralized distribution process starts at the CDC. Everybody who is involved administering COVID-19 vaccines place the orders at the state level, and then the CDC then aggregates all of those orders, sends them to us, and then we pick, pack, and ship those orders to the sites of administration. So an ancillary supply kit 
Really, if you boil it right down, you've got a needle and a syringe, you've got an alcohol prep pad, you have a face mask, a face shield, and you have a vaccine card, which we all know very well. They really need to arrive together so that the providers can safely and securely and confidently administer these vaccines as fast as possible to as many people as possible. Having the products that you need to deliver the vaccine is as important as having the vaccine. You've got a vial of vaccine, but you don't have a needle to put it in someone's arm. The vaccines can't be administered. We also knew that the supply chain was pretty tight and it was difficult to get some of the things that we might need to stand up a kitting operation. We were really starting from scratch. They awarded the contract at the end of August and we built our first kit in the middle of September. So we were able to stand up those operations in less than a month. Building a kit production capability in under a month doesn't allow for a lot of robotics or capital equipment. You kind of had to roll up your sleeves and put raw force to it, and that's what we did. But in essence, actually, it served us pretty well because we could flex and we were more agile for that. As the kit recipe changed, we could change the build process pretty quickly too. The other piece that made this really challenging is the cold chain aspect of it. And the fact that there were various different temperature ranges for the late stage vaccine candidates. For the stability of the vaccine itself and maintaining integrity, the manufacturer requires us to store and handle the vaccine at very specific temperatures. In this case, the frozen was negative 20 Celsius and the refrigerated was two to eight Celsius. If we get out of range, then there becomes a concern about the viability of that vaccine. You can imagine working in an environment which is colder than Minnesota in the middle of winter. The product is delivered to the McKesson location and it is unloaded quickly into the freezers or refrigerators. There are monitoring devices to ensure that we maintain integrity through the entire shipping process. We were training our team members to ship a life-saving vaccine. This is a person's mom, dad, grandparent. All of the practice that we put our team members through was so that each time we packed an order, we packed it to the best of our ability, we were ready. A historic breakthrough in the coronavirus pandemic, the FDA has authorized Pfizer and BioNTech's coronavirus vaccine for emergency use. The FDA moments ago approved Moderna's vaccine for emergency use and maybe get into arms beginning Monday. The fact that we have two highly effective vaccines in such a short turnover is a monumental feat. First shipments of the nation's second vaccine began shipping out today from a Memphis area distribution center. Workers are bundled up inside a massive freezer here. They're packing vials of the Moderna vaccine into boxes. Six million doses about to go out the door here and it all begins right here in Mississippi. The first day of distributing Moderna through our distribution network started at 3.30 in the morning. It was an emotional day. I was on site at one of the locations and watching our team pack the first order brought tears to my eyes and brought tears to the eyes of most that were in the building because we knew at that point we were starting a new chapter in the history of the COVID pandemic. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Watching all of the hard work that McKesson had put into this project and seeing it just come to life and being there with the team that really was putting in the long hours and prepping for this and to see ourselves be a part of history, to see McKesson be a part of history, was rewarding. It was the culmination of all of the work that had led up to that point, and knowing that we were now starting the process of getting our country back, getting the world back. There was a lot of joy, but I also knew it was just the beginning, and there was so much still left to be done. So like we do at McKesson, we said, okay, one milestone down, keep going.
Uh, we celebrated for about a minute and then um, moved on to the next thing that had to be done to make sure that we could meet their requirements. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky just signed off on the Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine for emergency use. It's significant because it's personal. It's literally a handoff person to person throughout the entire chain. And I think that everyone that's been involved with it realizes how much they've been part of it. People have signed boxes and at the other end it's been received and those boxes that were signed were signed by everyone that touched the vaccine through its entire chain. The first one read, first J&J pack out, get healthy. This is not the New York State Thruway in Buffalo. This is I-20 in Louisiana. Look at this. It's almost a complete whiteout. February of 2021, we are in full swing. We are distributing, we have caught our rhythm, and then the snowstorm hits. Halt your brakes if you think we're almost through with our latest A great deal of concern storm. across the state. It's Valentine's Day night, and the storm starts to roll across the south. By Monday, the National Weather Service had put about 120 million people under a severe weather watch. If the vaccines were stranded, because a delivery couldn't be made or a plane couldn't get off the ground, we were going to risk those vaccines becoming unusable. We've made the decision to halt the distribution and began building a recovery plan as to when we were able to safely bring employees to work and when our courier partners were able to safely deliver. It was critical that the teammates felt safe and secure uh, this is in the middle of a pandemic. Anything could happen. We wanted to make sure that their health was number one. As of now, we have a backlog of about six million. We were very concerned about getting vaccines out quickly during the height of the pandemic. So it was real important that we prepared for this and we recovered very quickly. McKesson ran extended shifts Saturday and Sunday to pack vaccines. 70 McKesson employees volunteered to work 1 a.m. shifts to prepare shipments to meet an 11 a.m. transit deadline. McKesson was successful in recovering from the storm because of the collaboration with the U.S. government and the delivery partners and the fact that the team gave a little bit extra that week, knowing that there were people waiting for vaccines. We now anticipate that all backlog doses will be delivered by midweek. Probably the biggest challenge is that we are trying to stay ahead of whatever's happening with the vaccine because you have to have the kits ready to go so that you can ship them when the vaccine is produced. The amount of vaccine, the kind of vaccine, when it's approved, all of that was changing. And so we would be in the process of doing something and then we needed to shift and do something different. We got the Moderna and J&J &J vaccines, which McKesson was shipping. And then you had the Pfizer vaccine, but we were shipping the kits to support that. Pfizer has to be reconstituted because it was ultra frozen, which meant that little vials of diluent had to go into the kit and had to arrive at the same time or else the vaccine was useless. Customers would get these large frozen vaccine doses. They need to open them, inspect them, and then recharge or resupply dry ice to make sure they stayed frozen. And so we needed to provide dry ice scoops, dry ice gloves, more face shields. Then we need different sizes of kits, so we had to change that. There's now over a dozen different kit types we're building. It's never been, okay, set it up and get it a steady state operation and then we'll be fine, because it is constantly changing. So understanding those nuances was the problems we had to solve on a regular basis. Vaccine could easily reach community health centers as the county pushes to vaccinate. 6, I can remember driving down to the community center and getting my first dose of the vaccine. Millions of people did that, but not a million people knew what it took to get that moment to be possible. Nobody saw the planning, nobody saw the building, nobody saw the training, the hiring. No one saw the team's commitments that made that miracle happen. And that was a tremendously reflective and proud moment for me. McKesson has been in operation for 188 years, and I would chalk this up as one of the most significant things that I've experienced uh, and probably that the company has ever done. Everyone put their hands in. One, 
two, three, woo! Yeah. We launched our new corporate mission this past year, advancing health outcomes for all. I couldn't be more proud of this endeavor as a great example of how we do that as a team. The program continues to evolve every day. You put one foot in front of the other and you just, you make progress and then you don't really think about the enormity of what you're doing every day. You know, as I reflect on the work that we've done and the work that we continue to do to support this pandemic response, maybe the most important aspect of this is every dose that we distribute is a life that's potentially saved. The work that we did with the U.S. government proved our dedication to healthcare. There's no question in my mind public-private partnerships work. They're actually essential. We couldn't have done this without the federal government. It really was a, a team effort, and without any one piece, it would not have worked as well. Scientists say the reality is we have to be prepared for the possibility of even so more new variants. It is very likely that uh, we're going to need shots over our lifetime. With COVID here to stay, doctors confident vaccines are as well. Vaccines remain one of the best tools we have in this. With the right measures in place, we can live with this without it being the dominant feature of our lives. It's a bit intimidating to think about taking on the national responsibility to design completely new ways to flow vaccine through various temperature requirement facilities to get it out to thousands and thousands of providers and reduce the cycle time to get those shots in the arm. But I'm pretty confident and maybe even hopeful that this will be the biggest challenge our company was ever asked to rise up to. And I'm happy to say we stand ready to support our governments here and abroad in any way we can to continue to bring the knowledge, the infrastructure, and the teams that we have to support the ongoing fight against COVID-19.